Hey family, this is the third installment of Tips for Solo Cruisers. If you have not seen parts one and two, can you go and check those out? Each part I'm speaking about something different. Also, before I continue, can you do me a favor? Can you like, comment, subscribe, click on the notification bell to be informed of future posts. It will greatly help my channel and I will appreciate it. And so today I want to talk about some cost saving tips for solo cruisers when it comes to booking your room. Tip number one, make sure you look at cruise lines and ships that cater to solo cruisers and not just those ships that have the solo meetups on the agenda no ships that really have solo cabins for solo cruisers and why is that because if you do a solo cabin unlike say for example an interior room you won't have to pay that double occupancy rate you will pay one price you won't have to pay double because interior rooms can fit two people and you'll be charged for the price of two people in that room and so look at ships that cater to solo cruisers with solo cabins and so one such cruise line they don't have it on every ship now is norwegian and so i showed on my channel i was on norwegian breakaway and I was on Norwegian Viva and each time I went in a solo cabin, or they call it the solo studio, and they have attached to their solo studio and solo cabin rooms a lounge. And so therefore it is additional space and being additional space, then it becomes an extension of your room. And so you don't have to feel like you're confined to your room. You have your room and you also have this lounge space. And it's a nice size lounge, really. You can be able to watch TV or hang out with different individuals that are there as well as solo cruisers. And so, but the one thing I like about Norwegian as well, they don't only have those solo studio rooms, they have solo interiors and solo ocean views and solo balconies. And all of these will have access to this lounge. It, I think it is great. If you've never tried Norwegian, maybe give it a try and try the solo cabins. And the thing about it is, when I've tried to book something even bigger than the solo studio, it's sold out. And so people really go for these cabins. They know they're gonna be by themselves. And so if they want more space than the studio, then they, those sell out. And so try it for yourself. And another cruise line, haven't been long in the game is Virgin Voyages. I did a review when I was aboard Virgin Scarlet Lady. And once again, didn't have to worry about the double occupancy, one price. And the thing about Virgin, if you don't know Virgin, Virgin is all inclusive as well. And so it gives you Wi Fi, it gives you specialty restaurants. It gives you all the food free for the most part. There are some things, some items. If you go on my channel, I did a before booking Virgin cruise. Check this out. So there are some items you will have to pay for. But for the most part, included in the price of that solo cabin is Wi-Fi and food and all these different things. So it's also another great solution for those individuals that are traveling by themselves they call that room the solo insider that's the room that they have for solo cruisers now we have royal also will have different studio state rooms um, as well for those people who love royal and the royal brand and so therefore Take advantage of it. Find those ships specifically that has those types of rooms and go for it. If you've never done Royal before and you feel like it is so expensive and you want to go by yourself and you don't have anybody to go with or whatever it is, or they don't have the time to go with you, find one of those ships that has one of these solo studio rooms and go for it. And so another ship that is very popular is Carnival. And I really hope that going forward, when they have these new ships that's coming out in the next few years, 
that they really cater to the solo cruiser. Right now, they do not cater to the solo cruiser. They don't have what you call solo studio rooms or they don't have a solo studio cabin or solo room for cruisers. And so they don't cater. And so the one thing I can only recommend, but not every ship has these type of rooms. I stayed on the Carnival Paradise and they had an upper lower room. Um, it still would be double occupancy, but it's the cheapest room um, that they have out there. And when I did the review, I was surprised that they had so much space you know, to walk around. It had a lot of space because even though your bed is small, it's a twin bed um, because they have it where you can have a pull down bed and have somebody else in the room. So the, the bed does not take up all of that space. And so if you have one of those ships, maybe on one of the older ships, take advantage of it and go in that room. If you pay double occupancy, but maybe it's a short cruise and the deal is really good and just take advantage of staying in that type of room. Tip number two, space. Now, how was the space really? In my honest opinion, I'm letting it be known and which did I like the most? Okay, so when it came to space, even though people may look at it and say, it is so small, it is so tiny, it looks claustrophobic, all of those things, it was not for me. I was able to make it work. And my favorite out of the ones that I have been in so far has got to be Norwegian. I love the fact that not only is the rooms really nice and configured well, I like the room that I stayed in Viva better. I think it was just a better functional room than the one that was on the breakaway but I love that lounge access. And so you don't have to feel claustrophobic because you go in the lounge, you relax, you know, you just chill out there and you could read a book. You could just, you know, bring your cell phone and listen to music with your pods or whatever. I really liked the experience and the fact that everybody doesn't have access to it. So, you know, you would have to have your, key card and the key card would have access to it. It's all in the key card. And so I love that more than anything. In my honest opinion, I like the space. It was good enough. I went on a seven day cruise and I was able to make it work aboard Norwegian Viva and I made it work. So gotta think about that. Um, three, the price for the most part, the price of a solo will be cheaper than that of an interior room. But if for whatever reason, there is a sale going on. So just don't look at that specifically and go straight for it. Look at the numbers, you know, really calculate the numbers and see if it makes sense. Maybe there's a sale going on at, at a moment. And so with the sale, um, you would be able to get certain things cheaper. Um, maybe it's really close in price. And so if it's really close in price, the closer in price you are from like an interior, for example, to a solo cabin, then maybe it's like, well, I'm only paying a little extra. I um, mean, so then maybe you should just go for the interior if you want a little bit more room. Um, but you won't get the lounge like on Norwegian, but it's, I think that you have to really look at the numbers and not just go straight away and say, I'm getting the solo cabin. And if the, the next category up or the next room up is close in price or if there's a sale, it may even be cheaper. So really look when you are booking. And the last tip, number four, overpacking. I know so many people overpack. And there may be people who said, I, every time I go on a cruise, I'm hooked now, I want a balcony. But if you wanna save a little money, and if you wanna be able to put that money, you could put that money towards an excursion. You could put that additional money towards, you know, maybe a specialty dining restaurant on the ship. You could 
put that money towards other things. Maybe you want to be able to get some souvenirs, whether it's on the ship or at the port. And so think about that. Like, so you may save in one area so that you can use maybe that money in additional areas. So I try not to overpack. I go to these rooms knowing that it's going to be a smaller room. And so what is my tip for not overpacking? So I may have like three items of footwear. And so I'll go on the ship with a pair of sneakers. I may have make a walking sandal and some flip flops to walk around the room. And when it comes to clothing, everything then is going to be more or less where I can combine the looks. And so the colors is going to be able to match blues and grays, maybe reds and you know, khakis. And so everything that I'm bringing in the suitcase, I'm able to match and coordinate together based upon what I have in the footwear. So even my sneakers may have different colors and different colors in it so that it can match with whatever it is that I am wearing. And so the safest bet would then maybe to be like a white sneaker, you know, if, if you have like a lot of different things and you just want to wear a lot of different colors and a lot of different items, maybe a white sneaker. I don't do white, a white sneaker when I go away. I do just something with multiple colors and that, okay, that matches with that, that I, I'm, I'm good to go. And so I think that would be a great suggestion. So you don't need to overpack and you simplify it. Maybe be able to bring a medium sized luggage. If you need a carry on, maybe a small duffel bag or something of that nature, and then use the space to the fullest in the room as much as you can, because you're not overpacking with all of these shoes and things of that nature. And so um, make it work for you. Um, make it work. I know that you can do it. I have done it two times now on seven day cruises. The Virgin Voyage Cruise was a shorter cruise, but on the breakaway and on the Viva for Norwegian was seven day cruises. And I was able to make it work. I really was. And so I hope these tips were helpful for you. And until next time, happy travels.